Using label of extremism, U.S. and Canada both seek to purge military government of corpo state nationalist dissent. Yes, when I remember in when we had 911 and we were calling everybody terrorists and the left, the quote unquote left, which is really not the left. There is no American left in America anymore. It is it is the American right. The American traditional right and then the American far right. And the American far right is most assuredly the DNC. They're far right fascistic. They're police state fascistic, moral supremacist, race supremacist. They're a, an evil horde of, of mad men and mad women. So using label of extremism. But anyway, back in those days, the, the there probably still was a left back in those days. And so they were rightly saying, one man's uh, terrorist and another man's freedom fighter. So be careful when you're lobbing terrorists around at everybody, extremists around everybody. But now that they have the power, now that they control the means of cultural and social production, and now that they have their hands on government guns, now all of a sudden they sound like far-right Republicans in 2003. And they're using the same exact tactics that the Republicans used to convince us that the Patriot Act was a OK. The Republican Party, the so-called party of the Bill of Rights, they passed the Patriot Act in which you, now you could have secret courts decide your fate without any due process. That's perfectly fine. That's what happened. And that's the climate that we still live in. And now the DNC is is taking full advantage of that. So I'm going to call this video Joe Biden admin to label dissenters extremists as excuse to purge government of non-DNC, because that's really what's doing it. What they really need, is, and, and, and listen, Donald Trump, he could have done this too. You know, when he was president, he could have done these same things. He could have declared the DNC people and their views extremist and then routed them out of government. Of course, it would have been harder for him because he... He, he, I, I think that Donald Trump was somewhat naive and really didn't understand the, the full, the full severity of the end game that was being played, and he thought that he could reason with people. I think he thought he could reason people, maybe, but if he maybe had been a little bit more, uh, well, when it, a little bit more jaundiced, then maybe he could have used the same tactic to get rid of the DNC to purge the land of the DNC, and and we would all be better off if the DNC was purged from all all offices, whether it's corporate offices or government offices and most assuredly school offices, we would all be better off. The problem is who would replace them? I don't know that we have many in the political field, left or right. Uh, I should put that in quotes, left or right, uh, that that would actually carry out a Bill of Rights agenda for we the people. I imagine the quote unquote right would use the same well, they would they would use the same type of tactics to try to eliminate competition that the quote unquote left is now using. <clears throat> so we need a like I said before in other other segments on this very show, and I'll say over and over again, we need a Bill of Rights party that uh, is peopled by human beings that have no experience whatsoever in government or in corporate boards because those people they're corrupted. You can't trust them. <clears throat> we need regular human beings that aren't deriving their power from corpo state nationalism. And and that's not in the Republican Party. And, and it's certainly not in the Democrat Party. Extremism, political weapon target U.S. military government personnel. Biden administration uses extremism as veil for purging government of non-DNC. That's our topic report. That's what this is, a topic report. Examining extremism in the military. This is from the left, 538. Around 10% of those arrested so far for their involvement in a January 6th event at the Capitol are veterans. Yeah, they shouldn't be arrested in the first place. None of them should be. The episode of Examined by ABC News explores what attracts former members of the U.S. military to quote-unquote far-right movements. By far-right, you mean non-DNC. So anybody that doesn't believe that you should teach your children about sin skins... They, their children are born with sin skins and that their their parents are evil and that their very country is evil. The Anybody that doesn't believe that that's a good idea, they would be labeled far right. If you don't want to, to create a condition in which children are vulnerable to grooming from probably DNC members, you are now labeled far right. If you oppose their, their particular agenda down the line, if you oppose abortion, you're far right. That's that's what they mean here. That's what 538 means. 
And they're just doing the job that they were hired to do by the, the, the corporate nationalists. That's all they are. They're just another, they're just another uh, fake news organ, uh, a disinformation center. So, uh, uh, continuing here, uh, explores what attracts former members of the U.S. military to, quote, unquote, well, to, to, to non-DNC movements. And what the military, the DNC military, not the American military, because the American military is no more. Because if it was, it would have stopped what happened on January 6th, but it didn't. It, it sided with the corporate nationalists, corporate state nationalists, is doing to stop such, quote, unquote, extremism developing in its ranks. And then we have from Canada, and I wanted to highlight this because uh, the same thing is uh, they're, they're using the same exact tactic. By the way, you know how else uses this tactic? Rakeep, er, er, Rakeep how do you say is Rakeep, Rick, Rakeep Erdogan, Erdogan, the the Erzat's uh, so-called president of Turkey. Erdogan uses the label of extremists to target people in his military. He's routed out anybody that opposes his Islamist fascist agenda. And these are DNC fascists is what they are. But they're still they're still in the same camp. And wh why does the DNC hate Erdogan so much? Because Erdogan is them. They're, they're, they hate the one that's them. They don't want him because he uses the same tactics as they do. And he's effective. And so they need to eliminate Erdogan because he's still in their thunder. I might be reaching a bit there, but uh, at any rate, uh, the Canadian Army investigation of a troubled reserve unit at the center of allegations of right wing extremism. Really non corporate nationalist uh, worldviews identified several members as vulnerable and at risk of being swept up into a hateful ideology. Again, hateful ideology. I mean, this is the same group, the Canada same as America that is using this 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 uh, this uh, critical race theory garbage you know 40 percent of critical race theory makes sense the 60 percent though is horribly demonizing damaging and is demoralizing children that are being taught that they were they were born with either sin skins or victim skins either way the children are demoralized and their relationships to their parents is destroyed if they believe this garbage because their parents are either weak who refuse to protect them or they're evil villains who 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 attacked their 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 friends and their neighbors either way it makes them all more dependent on the authority figures and not their families this is exactly what they want so uh let's see more headlines here. i'm not going to read any more of that uh more headlines here the normalization of anti-democratic extremism in the united states the cairo review of global affairs yeah and to them again this they're part of the the whole uh Oh, corpo state nationalism. That's who they are. They're on board with that. They are totally on board with that. I'm not even going to read you their excerpt, but it's there for you to read. So you go to freedomist.com. You can read it. White House completes domestic extremism review. The White House said Tuesday that it has completed its assessment of the threat posed by domestic extremism and is looking to, at making policy recommendations in the coming weeks. I could report that we completed our policy review in the 100 days that we allotted for it. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters at a briefing when asked about the statement status of the assessment. We are taking a look at what occurred during that review. Lessons that we've learned in ensuring that the policy responses that we've been discussing and developing are the right ones. You mean the ones that eliminate dissent. That's what you mean. I'll, I'll end that report there.